Today we have an interesting calculus problem that ties together lots of interesting topics. So we have the limit as k tends to infinity of square root k divided by e to the k times e to an integral involving the floor function. Wow. And k here is an integer. And it looks really cool, but how on earth do we approach this? Well, it makes perfect sense to focus our attention on the integral first. So let's call i the integral from 0 to infinity of floor k times e to the negative x dx. And I'm just going to take the whole thing and perform a u substitution. That is, we're going to let k times e to the negative x equal u. Now this implies that e to the negative x would be u by k, or x equals negative log u by k. And this implies that dx would be, well, we have a negative sign, k by u, and because of the chain rule, we have a 1 by k factor, du. So some nice cancellation occurs, meaning that dx is now negative 1 by u, du. Also, we can write x here using the properties of the logarithm as log k by u. Okay, cool. Now, what about the limits of integration? As x tends to 0, we have u approaching k. And as x approaches infinity, we have u approaching 0. And all of this implies that my integral is now the integral from k to 0 of the floor of u, and the differential element here is negative 1 by u, du, and we can rewrite this as the integral from 0 to k, where the two negatives now cancel out, of floor u by u du. Now let's break down the integral from 0 to k to make use of the properties of the floor function. So the integral from 0 to k can be written as the integral from 0 to 1, plus the integral from 1 to 2, plus the integral from 2 to 3, and so on and so forth plus the integral from k minus 1 to k of floor u by u du. Now, for u lying between n minus 1 and n, the floor function will return n. So that means the target integral i equals, for the integral from 0 to 1, we get a big fat 0, so that just gets crossed out. And then we have the integral from 1 to 2 of 1 by u du, plus the integral from 2 to 3 of 2 by u du, and so on and so forth. We have the integral from uh, k minus 1 to k of k minus 1 by u du. Now all of this stuff just sorts out to natural logarithms. But let me just write this as a sum. So this is the sum over the integers n from 1 to k. Let's make a k minus 1. So these are the integrals. n to n plus 1. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. So for n equal to k minus 1, the upper limit in the last integral is going to be k. Yeah, everything looks good so far. And we have n by u du. Okay, cool. So this is just n times the integral, meaning that we have the sum over n from 1 to k minus 1 of n times the logarithm of u with the limits being n and n plus 1. That means we have the sum over n of n times log n plus 1 minus log n. So that's what the integral i sorts out to. And this looks like it's going to be something like a telescoping sum, right? So let me just expand the summation here. And that would give me, for n equals 1, we have log 2 minus log 1, log 1 being a 0, plus for n equals 2, we have log 3 minus log 2 times 2, of course plus 3 times log 4 minus log 3, 
and so on and so forth. We have n equal to k minus 1. So we have k minus 1 times log k minus log k minus 1. There's actually a pretty interesting pattern here. Notice for the log 2s, we have two negative log 2s and a positive log 2, which leaves us with negative log 2. And for the log 3s, we have three negative log 3s and two positive log 3s. So again, we have a negative sign and log 3. And it's clear that for the next term, we would have 4 times log 5 minus log 4. So again, we're left with negative log 4. And I could just factor out the negative 1 and write this as log 2 plus log 3 plus log 4 all the way up to... We're going to be left with k minus 1 times this log k minus 1 term with a negative sign, but the previous term would have a k minus 2 times log k minus 1 term. So yeah, we're again left with log k minus 1. And the surviving term outside would be this k minus 1 times log k term. Now using the properties of the logarithm, I can combine all of these logarithms into a single one. So I have negative log 2 times 3, and of course I can write a 1 there as well. So 1 times 2 times 3, all the way up to k minus 1. And what is this thing? Well, this would be k minus 1 factorial, right? And we have to add to it using the properties of the logarithm. Again, I can write this as log k to the k minus 1. So that means we have negative log k minus 1 factorial plus log k to the k minus 1. That's the integral i, and again we can combine them into a single logarithm by writing log k to the k minus 1 divided by k minus 1 factorial, which is a pretty cool result. Now returning to the limit problem, we had the limit as k tends to infinity of root k by e to the k times e to the integral i. And the integral i is log of something, so the log and the exponential function cancel out because they're inverse functions, and we have the limit as k tends to infinity of root k by e to the k times k to the k minus 1 divided by k minus 1 factorial. And of course, we can expand by k and write this now as the limit as k tends to infinity of root k divided by e to the k times k to the k divided by k factorial. But how on earth are we going to evaluate the limit we have now? Well, here's the funny thing. This problem was sent to me by subscriber Michael Clark a few weeks back. And in his email, Michael stated that he's an engineer. And this is a problem that engineers would love solving. And at that time, I didn't understand why. I was fascinated by the problem, but I didn't understand the whole thing about engineers liking to solve this problem. But when I got to this particular step where I had this k factorial term and k approaching infinity... I started laughing because I got the joke. We're going to solve it by approximating. We're going to use Stirling's approximation for k factorial. So in tribute to all the engineers watching, we have in the limit as k tends to infinity, k factorial being asymptotically equal to root 2 pi k times k by e to the k, which is extremely cool, no doubt, and approximation. Can't get much better than that, can we? So that means we have the limit, as k tends to infinity, of root k by e to the k times k to the k, and 1 by k factorial is now in the denominator root 2 pi times root k times e to the k divided by k to the k, and look at how perfectly this problem is crafted. I was still laughing while solving this problem.
this is just brilliant. I mean, look at all this cancellation. And we're left with 1 by root 2 pi, which is extremely cool, no doubt. I really enjoyed solving this. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.